working at the Maine Conservation School back in 2001 and over a couple of years helping students at the camp and then finally making my way to test encampment where I was brought on as an examiner quite a few years ago and I left for a while on other adventures with my family and now I got pulled back into the fold and became another examiner with Moose and everyone back at Test Encampment. And I also run the Junior Maine Woodsman and Woodsman program at Breakwater Summer Camps here in Portland to help act as a feeder program for the other Junior Maine Guide programs here in the state. Let me, I'll start things off. Um, the Junior Maine Guide program uh, <clears throat> was an act of legislature in 1936 and as that program has developed and stuff uh, it was some time in the early 70s the main camp directors decided that we needed to also establish programs for younger candidates junior main guy candidates or for individuals 14 through 18 and um, the main camp directors came up with what are known as the junior main woodsman program and the main woodsman program the junior main woodsman program um, is for students 9 through 12 and the main woodsman are for students 12 through 14 and i know those ages can be adjusted um, the great thing about these two younger programs is that they can all be done in-house. That each camp has its own different philosophy. You have your own different time schedules. Um, so you know, you know how much time you, you can spend training these individuals for the, the program. And also, it's up to the individual camps how you, how you evaluate your candidate, um, you know, once you think that individual has the skills and can become a junior main woodsman or main woodsman, um, and then we have patches that we can send out, uh, et cetera. So you can have a, a formal testing camp or you can evaluate the youngsters as they go on. But again, it just fits with what your camp philosophy is. Most of you probably have seen our um, course book, The Art of Outdoor Living, um, and that's been just in the market now. It's been out for two or three years, and we have sections in there for these two younger programs. We list the evaluations, the type of courses and the programs, and they are being evaluated in the same areas that the Junior Main Guy programs does, and there are 11 majors and 10 minors. Uh, that the youngsters then start to get exposed to. And one of the, you know, the numerous advantages about um, being involved in this program, and um, Ron and Lou will mention all of that, but many camps do use those two programs as a stepping stone, giving their youngsters some experience and eventually feeding into the Junior Main Guy program and going to our five-day testing camp. Excellent. So we're going to talk a little bit about getting started with Junior Maine Woodscraft and Maine Woodsman um, in, within your program. One of the first things I would uh, suggest is to actually get the Art of Outdoor Living, which you can, is available through Maine Summer Camps. And it, it truly is the Bible for all of the levels, has lots of information. And a lot of times you think about the Junior Maine Guide program and then work it back. It's more age appropriate to our 9 to 12 year olds or 12 to 14 year olds. Um, I like what Moose said, you know, this is an in-house program. You work with what you have. If you're starting from scratch, uh, a quick look around the tool shed at camp, you probably would find a lot of the equipment. And uh, we've got an equipment list that we can furnish to camps uh, to get them started. But really, I want to I want to start off with, um, you know, we're celebrating these traditions and keeping these traditions alive in Maine. And with the Junior Maine Woodscraft, it's really a gateway experience. And I think that the best way to start is to, to make it visible, give kids, um, some connection, whether it's a large, you know, the patch on the wall or something visible, visible, and then get them excited about the program, the thing that they may learn. And then when you start off, if you look at all the content or the curriculum, 
um, it's really important to start off with that gateway experience. And Lou and I were just talking about, um, say, fire and shelter as a lesson. It's a great way to set the hook to uh, have kids going out and, and constructing a fire, building shelter, and have a, a, a great experience, hands-on. And then from that point, talk a little bit about the program, the goals, and you can start to blend in some of the more curriculum components. Uh, but really getting that hands-on experience and that wow factor, I think, is going to excite folks. And if you're starting with older kids, starting with the, the main Woodsman um, tracks with your 12 to 14 year olds, it's really the same thing. Giving them something exciting to get the get the buy-in, and um, I think from there you'll you'll see success. There's lots of different directions with um, you know the different skill sets. Um, you can you can break it into majors and minors, really, with what your camp staff are comfortable with, and build off of that. And then there's a lot of resources to also get started. So the book is certainly a resource. Uh, there's a website through Maine Summer Camps. Uh, we've got resources within the guidebooks and we've got the, the smaller guidebook book, which just showcases the lessons in a more, much more brief way. But in the back is lots of other ways to, to get uh, information through Maine uh, in the Fisheries and Wildlife, uh, places like Yellow Bean, uh, Leave No Trace, there's a lot of other resources out there to help build your program and um, you know, work that into your program. Now looking at Maine summer camps, uh, there's some camps that run a week, a one week program. Many of you will run day camps or multiple week uh, programs or sessions that could be three or four weeks. And you'd have to adapt what works for you. Uh, but you know, at Brian Pond, we do the Junior Maine Woodscraft as a one week program. And it's part of each day the kids are learning these skills. They're doing canoeing, they're learning hiking, um, you know, practicing some outdoor cooking. And it's all at that entry level stage. And at the end of the week, uh, they earn their patch through satisfying all those different areas. And then our main Woodsman program is a two week program. And it's a little bit more intense the way that we've designed it. But you could essentially uh, work main Woodsman into, you know, um, even a day camp program, depending on what you have to work with. Lou, did you want to elaborate on any of that? Yeah, on the day camp program, one of the things that people get stuck on is that these skills have to be done in a wilderness setting, or even what's the purpose of these skills if you're not in the wilderness. And the way I've answered that question over the last couple of years is, these are life skills. You're learning how to take care, of your, take care of yourself, how to be a leader, how to maintain equipment, use tools, uh, deal with hygiene, health and wellness with the meal prepping, meal planning and the actual skills of cooking, which are some of the lost skills in our current paradigm in our greater world where people go out a lot. So if you think of why these skills are important, you need to look at the broader picture of the current world we live in and go, there's a lacking of life skills in a lot of places. So this program gives you all those key components of self-care, group care, so you can plug it into just about anywhere. I've used these skills with alternative in alternative education settings. So even though you may not go for the patch, it's nice to actually use that format of skills to develop those things with your students. So if you think beyond that, then eventually if that patch becomes the carrot for the student that wants to go on and become a main guide or junior main guide, they'll actually have skill development through it. So it's not just axemanship or knife skills you got to be the best but how to use the knife and giving them space and time to practice individual skills as well and like i said it can be done in any setting you want except like ron said you can do it in a week i do my day camp because he has an overnight camp mine's a day camp program and we spread it out over two weeks and we still do the overnight component and we do one overnight to satisfy that requirement so the kids can actually be in the woods and because a lot of the skills where you're training them it's a different totally different experiment experience at the end of the week when you go okay kids this is your test encampment set everything up after a week and a half of training now they're living the skills not just practicing them so providing that space for just practice is the biggest thing that you can do and like I said I teach in the middle of Portland at Breakwater School and most of the stuff I do is either in a basement or on blacktop with a few trips to the school's property that's 10 to 15 minutes away, or even on local hiking trails and city tree identification in between houses. So that's how I get around a lot of this wilderness setting stuff. 
that people see as a hurdle. So thanks, Lou. Um, one thing I also want to want to add is we're doing this for for all of you. And if anybody has any questions, you can certainly um, uh, answer your ask your questions here now. And at the end, we'll have a little bit more time to uh, answer some more general questions. So if something we're talking about now is really relative uh, to what's on your mind. Uh, let us know, and we'll uh, we'll make sure that we can answer your questions. Um, I wanted to highlight a couple of things. A lot of camps uh, are probably already doing a lot of the components of these programs. They're canoeing, they're hiking, they're teaching people to trace, maybe they're building fires. And I think you'd be surprised if you looked at some of the activities that you're already doing, um, that you, you probably have a, a good head start on the, on the way here. Um, the program at all levels, you're building uh, self-reliance, you're building team building. Kids are gonna learn life skills that they may continue to do, you know, as they, as they grow up. And you also might be creating your next uh, group of staff. We see a lot of folks that have worked through these programs up into the junior main guide program. Uh, and after encampment, they come back and they start applying for camp jobs. And at that point, they've got a solid, very diverse set of outdoor skills, um, high level of first aid and awareness. And uh, it's, it's great to see some of them then go back to the camps that they grew up at and contribute as a staff member. Another big buzz right now, certainly in the state of Maine, is career pathways. It's something that at Bryant Pond and, and some of the other camps we're starting to look at is how can we instill um, things in our young folks today that will help guide them towards future careers. And I know firsthand I've seen with the Junior Maine Guide Program is kids coming in at a young age, doing a maybe an entry level camp program in the naturalist path or something working their way into Junior Maine Woodscraft, then Maine Woodsman into JM, uh, Junior Maine Guide. And many of them continue on. They work um, towards becoming a game warden, going to the Forest Service, um, Appalachian Mountain Club. There's lots of opportunities to connect um, the dots along the way. So Career Pathways is one, one thing that we're really looking at um, as another kind of residual outcome of this. The, um, uh, uh, as far as Career Pathways go, I think people sometimes pigeonhole junior main guide as guides or outdoor skills or wardens. Um, I spent some time in a research lab where all of a sudden now we left the building and actually had to plan our trips, pack the equipment, and go on an expedition to collect samples. So that can be field work in the Antarctic. It can be field work in the middle of the ocean. So these skills again, go beyond the scope of the woods. So even a researcher, a biologist, or even a, anybody that works in any sort of science field will use that experience when prepping or planning any trip that they go on. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, they're also learning, um, you know, commitment to, to challenging themselves, to work towards a goal. You know, the, uh, the Junior Maine Woodscraft program, again, the entry level into this, uh, a lot of folks, they'll run whatever curriculum works for their program, and at the end, they get a, they get a patch for satisfying those requirements. The Junior Main Guide, obviously, is the only program uh, in this tract where you actually go and you're tested by an outside um, committee, and there's a group of testers. The, uh, the encampment experience is a one-week experience, Monday through Friday, currently being held in a Quasic near Rangeley, and at that point, Junior Main Guides are coming in um, they're in the driver's seat. They're setting up camp with their peers from their sponsoring camp. And they're doing all their, um, their tests, either practical or written. There's majors and minors. Uh, but at that point, they're kind of in the driver's seat. But they really have to want it. They, wanna, they have to want to, to earn that patch and work hard for it. And um, I'd say probably a 45 to 55% passing rate fluctuates year to year. But uh, it is a, a pretty high challenge at that point to uh, to achieve that. And I'm pretty proud of that. I think it falls right in line with the traditions of a registered main guide, that not everybody just gets a guide's license. You have to work for it. You have to really um, you know, hone your skills. And um, those skills, like, like we just said, can be extrapolated into lots of different things, not just the guiding industry or forestry. It can be um, you know, applied to so, so many things to be committing to. Oh, one of the other things to go along with that is thinking of who you're gonna reach out to and just open it up to everyone. Again, it's a self-care thing and leadership, something that you can't put a price on. Uh, so if anybody has any questions, go ahead and start asking away. Uh, one thing I wanted to 
um, address is within the curriculum, something that, that has come up as far as questions is for axmanship, you know, in being outdoors, we have um, a suggested equipment list, which we have, you know, proven out what seems to work, what seems to be really safe, and then practices that um, really give us the, the uh, best handle on risk management. And there have been questions about, you know, young folks with knives, axes, and saws, and things like that. And, um, you know, we can say confidently that it's, if we're teaching those skills, and we're teaching them very thoughtfully and deliberately in regards to safety, that those skills can be part of your camp program pretty, pretty nicely. Um, in the, our, our list, we've got a, a specific type of knife that we have found works really well for camps. They're very inexpensive. They're about 12 to $13. And that's the um, more knives. And we'll elaborate a little bit more on brands and things that we suggest later on. But um, it's a fixed blade knife with a rubber grip and in, uh, a nice plastic sheath. And I know at camp, we've got them everywhere. Um, they're very, very useful. But that's a you know kind of a cornerstone for the program is being outdoors whether you're putting up firewood or you're cutting parachute cord and then working with bow saws uh, or camp saws and then axes and i think axes are where sometimes people may um, get a little bit nervous but with the protocols that you'll find in the book in the protocols the way that we teach it um, we teach the, the safest most practical way to use it and i was just talking to uh, moose on my ride here I've been uh, running a, my program for the last 13 years and Junior Main Guide at Ryan Pond is in its 20th year and we have never had an injury with an ax. Um, you know, and I think with, uh, you know, knives, sometimes we're gonna have a, a nicked finger or whatnot. I know as an adult, I still have that same issue, but we teach the safest way to use it. And that really is a big part of the Junior Main Guide program whether you putting up shelters and whatnot. So um, we will have this, this list of suggested equipment available. Uh, we can email it to folks uh, at any point in time. Um, and it's a growing list. We're always adding things to it. So one of the things that Ron's talking about is also the perceived risk versus actual risk. And one of the things I tell a lot of the students that I work with, and I work a lot with adults as well, is when you're focused on the skill itself and you follow the safety rules to the T, it's not when you, it's not if you cut yourself, it's when you cut yourself. So those are the things you need to think about that over time, it's not usually the first student that starts the program that cuts himself. It's usually the adult or leader that's in a hurry that goes off those little rules because they're in a hurry and making quick decisions. So a lot of the stuff I, like Ron, have been doing this for 20 years now myself and very few people, I can count three people that have cut themselves using knives. And again, if you go back to the simple rules we use, they broke one of those and that's it. So it's not difficult. It's not fear-based at all. Exactly. Um, there are around 20 camps at the moment that are involved in the junior Maine woodsman, Maine woodsman programs that we know about. They're, they're the groups that um, contact Maine camps to get the patches. And our, since the publication of our book, school groups have also picked up our curriculum and it's being used in a couple of high schools in the state and as well as junior highs there too. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about was, um, you know, Lou mentioned coming in that this can be adapted to any place. I can be, you know, indoors and whatnot. But one thing um, is nice to think about is this might open some doors for camps to have other opportunities to either do, you know, an overnight camp or, you know, and it could be at a state park, but it could be a, a wilderness setting uh, to get them outdoors to actually practice these skills, be planning a meal, planning a menu and you know, cooking over the fire. If that's not possible, I think we, you know, most of us uh, would have a place that you can set up a campsite right at camp. And it's kind of nice to have a campsite set up that is your junior main woodscraft or your main woodscraft um, site. So the kids kind of take some ownership of that and it's a great practice area. You can set up a, an ax, knife and saw station, you know, cooking areas and things like that. And I know with the, um, the Greenland Point 4-H camp that we just purchased, we're actually in the process of building one right now and uh, that will be where they practice all those skills. So I know that all of our camps are structured differently. Some folks, they have, we have choice period or uh, 
um, you know, scheduled blocks. But if you had a, a location or a building that would support some of the, the gear, it might be a nice way to set up a little campsite and be going through some of those mock test scenarios where you have the kids setting up tel uh, shelters and fire and things like that, their tents, and, um, and then have an instructor come in and do a mock inspection and do a group encampment check. Um, it allows the kids to practice these skills and to you know, kind of show off their campsite and whatnot and learn from making mistakes, uh, whether they you know, maybe le left trash out or they didn't have you know, a med kit handy, things like that. They start getting in the mindset at that younger level of what it looks like to become a junior green guide. And um, I think it's, it's good to groom them consistently from that early age. Another thing that uh, we wanted to talk about today is that the resources for you as pot potential camp directors or program leaders to incorporate this program is there is a, a, a lot of information in these two books, but one great way to get started is to really join us for the Junior Main Guide rend Rendezvous, which is held uh, annually is held at Bryant Pond right now in um, early July. And it's a full day where all the camps that are participating that are available join us. We bring all these kids together from the different camps at the JMG level. And they get a chance to experience, I think we've got four or five different workshops they all rotate through. And we've got um, axe, knife, and saw, canoeing, fire and shelter, um, top, map. top of map, and then there's some other general session uh, topics that we cover uh, in a larger group setting. While that's going on, the instructors have a chance to speak to uh, Moose and talk a little bit about expectations for, for staff and you know, for supervisory staff that are in encampment. But it's a really great way for a camp that's interested in this to actually walk around to the stations and see what's going on, um, see the process and the, and the protocols that we're teaching. And we're really teaching the way that we're going to be testing them um, so that we're being very, very consistent. There's a lot of time for them to ask uh, questions. Um, and yep, thanks. Ron's reminding me it's July 11th. So it's Saturday, July 11th, we provide lunch. And I think last year we had five or six people drop in that had some questions and they got to see it firsthand. And then the other opportunity would be to schedule a visit uh, with, with Moose and the committee uh, and join us for uh, encampment, which is the last full week of July right in Aquasic. At, uh, it's an old Boy Scout camp, it's a beautiful place. And you'll be able to actually see in the moment what encampment looks like uh, from that level. And you'll see campers from all over the state uh, testing on majors and minors, taking writtens. You'll be able to see all the practical tests like canoeing, white bay fire, axemanship, topple map. Um, and I would suggest bring a notebook and a pen because you gotta take a lot of notes, but that's a really good chance to ask questions, see the flow, and it really helps to educate you on which direction you wanna be going in and I would really suggest that even for the, the junior main woodscraft, because you want to make sure that you're consistent from the beginning to you know, hopefully get them to that, that goal. Um, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, on that same thing, uh, for those of you that are doing junior main woodsmen and woodsmen already, that like all of us, you never feel like there's enough time. Uh, this year, I'm actually going to be implementing a home practice list uh, before the students even get to my camp. Uh, the major area in that is actually cooking. So things that parents can help them at home is, will you let your kids cook grilled cheese, boil pasta, make oatmeal, bake a cake in the oven? This way they actually get the bugs worked out of the technical aspects with less things that can go wrong. So they're using a controlled stove with consistent temperature. So once they can learn to mix the right ingredients and bake it then, now they take that same skill and when they come to us, I don't have to teach them how to mix the ingredients. I just need to teach them how to do it in a Dutch oven or a reflector oven or on a camp oven. So that's something I'll be implementing this year as a way of parents understanding that the more you let your kids do at home, the more well-rounded and prepared they'll be, not only for junior main guide or woodsman skills, but actually life skills when they go out on their own and they have to cook their own meals, do their own laundry, and do those sorts of things as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, cooking is a big part of it. And I know I'll speak from um, my perspective at Brian Pond with our Junior Main Woodscraft. They're learning introductory cooking skills, but we're, we're teaching them. Uh, we're actually doing a lot of the cooking on the front end of the week. And we're showing them different ways of cooking. Um, it's obviously cooking outdoors, trial by error. You're going to burn the brownies, you're going to burn the biscuits, and you learn, you know, what did I do? What could I do the next time? 
and then we slowly have them actually um, working with you know the different types of cooking, reflector ovens, Dutch ovens, campfire cooking. Uh, but it's really flexible to what your camp utilizes. Uh, it could be anything from a Kona stove to cooking right over the fire and the coals. Um, a big part is planning menus and having kids think like what would they want to eat and if they're on a trip, if they're going to be you know, providing food for themselves or a group, what do you know, what they want to have for that trip. And uh, I'd say at that young level, they brought probably going to cook maybe three meals as a group themselves. As they work into Junior Main Woodscraft uh, or Main Woodscraft and then Junior Main Guide, they're going to be much more um, of a reliance on those cooking skills. And at the, um, the JMG level, they have to satisfy a bake, a boil, and a fry. Um, as a bare minimum, but they're cooking for the entire week through that program. So we really want to uh, focus on having those skills, being safe, focused on hygiene and you know sanitation and things like that, but cooking meals as if you were a guide and you're taking care of clients that you'd like to have come back again. So I always kind of gravitate towards the old traditional main guides, you know, they were paddling the, Al the Allagash, people come from all over the, you know, the world to paddle in the remote parts of Maine and you might have the, the wettest week of, you know, the whole summer. But if your food's good, they're going to remember that. And that's the mindset we try to instill in our young folks is when you're cooking, really focus on the food, make sure it's nutritious, it's good. And um, I think that, that kind of is our guiding principle. And then, you know, at the same time, we're cooking food and we're serving to others. So making sure that we're washing our hands and we're, you know, taking care of um, coolers and, and make sure we have plenty of ice and things like that. We're packing so we have non-perishables for an extended canoe trip or whatnot. Uh, an easy way to practice these skills at a young level is to have kids be, um, you know, planning trips on a, in a notebook and basically you give them a scenario. I'm going to plan a weekend trip with six people and uh, the trip's going to happen in July. You can go down and start making your list of your group gear, your personal gear, and then your camp kitchen and then create your menus and then throw in different variables, different times of the year, different duration of trips, maybe it's a canoe trip, you can you know, afford a little bit more weight. So there's a lot of directions you can go in. And again, I think cooking is a, another big part of the program that kids really, really like and allows them to use a lot of their personal talent. We've talked a lot about uh, developing individual skills and the, probably the final emphasis is getting all these individuals together to work as a group. Lou mentioned that he tries to take everybody out on an overnight together. So there, there's a group there, they're sharing their chores. They find it out how important that everybody has to do their own jobs. By the time um, the candidates are old enough to go to junior main guide camp, um, there can be no more than six individuals in an encampment. And they're there for five days um, doing everything uh, to do that. And, uh, being able to function to get along with a group is just such a key part to this program and how it is taught and how it is evaluated. Absolutely. So do we have any questions at all? Do we have any questions at all that they want to they want to drop in before we keep going? Yep. Okay. I can't read it from here. <laughs> Here with us. I'm with Camp Forest, which has a curriculum primarily based on JMG skills. Thanks so much for conducting this webinar. I'd love to hear strategies for imparting main map knowledge, gender-based strategies, how to make expeditions less intimidating, what schools have picked up the JMG curriculum, dealing with tick fear and checks. All right. Yeah, that's a full <laughs> of topics. And, uh, we may have to reread that again. Um, I can get started here on a couple of these things. Um, so as far as ticks, I mean, ticks are a real concern and certainly for the camps. We have got a lot of parents that are nervous about sending their kids to camp. And I think that um, we really work on, I guess, quelling the fear and educating kids on appropriate tick checks and making recommendations, you know, whether it's permethrin or whatever you find is the best preventative but really trying to, um, I think, tamp down the fear and ramp up the education. And we do take our tick checks serious. You know, we schedule it during the day. 
um, to make sure kids are being self-aware and then answering lots of questions for parents. So it's a good question. I'm sure it's on a lot of our minds. Um, the, the gender question there, I will say that um, I come from a camp where Brian Pond is a, it's a co-ed program. And for all of our programs, uh, they're co-ed, but for our junior main guides, they're together for an entire month. Um, so four weeks straight. And we've got our campsite set up where we've got girls tents on one side and boys tents on the other side. And we set the standard of just um, being there for the skills. And I'm, I'm really happy to say we haven't had any issues. Um, I really enjoy seeing boys and girls working together and they learn so much from each other. And you might see, you know, um, picture that 14 year old boy watching a young lady swinging an ax and realizing that she's actually doing a much better job at a skill that he thought he'd be really good at. So, sure. Uh, as far as gender goes, I know right now it's a hot topic with some people of what people identify as. And one of the things I like to make sure I talk about um, with my groups is we don't care what your gender is. We care that you're here to learn the skills. And as long as everyone respects each other as a being person individual, we've never had any issues. As long as people address that as a we're just here to learn skills and be the better, be better at the skills we're doing, no matter who is doing them. Yep. I'll say one more thing on the gender too, is um, the junior main guide camp, when we're doing our evaluation, um, we have uh, the boys and the girls that are doing the same test side by side. And really we don't see any difference uh, Whatsoever, I, I remember uh, when I was evaluating the acts, the only difference that I would saw is many of the boys, or I can't say many, some of the boys were baby bulls and they just went in and then attacked their billets with their acts and stuff and say, oh, I'm strong enough, I can take care of this. While it's very obvious that the girls had paid attention a little bit more to their instructors and were taking their time and the technique of the girls was really better than the boys because it was a skill that most of them hadn't been introduced to before. We're gonna reread the question because there's, there's several okay. topics there as well. Uh, strategies for imparting mean map knowledge and how to make expeditions less intimidating and what schools have picked up the curriculum. Okay, excellent. Um, so I'll start with main map. So one of the things that we found uh, really useful for main map, uh, personally, when I looked at the list of main uh, cities and towns, and rivers, mountains, and parks, uh, it can be pretty overwhelming. And certainly at the main, uh, the junior main guide level. So what we actually did at camp is we purchased a really large map. It's about a three by four state of main map. Uh, I think it was like twenty dollars, and it's laminated, and we actually framed that. Um, so we start with looking at the, the state as a whole, and then we actually map out our major rivers. So now you actually get to bisect the map, and we just use a, a dry erase marker right on the map, but you actually get to learn where the rivers are, and you start to bisect the map into chunks. Um, the next we do uh, the mountains. So you've got some you know, points that maybe kids know right off the bat, some of them they don't know, and we start to learn where the mountains are, and then parks. And at that point, now you've got enough um, you know, I guess components broken down in the map, you can start adding the cities and towns. Uh, it's a pretty big state for a small state, but we found that, was, that has a um, really, it's a really easy way to break it down. And then we actually took the, the same map, broke it down into um, just a piece of paper, and we have the kids trace everything out, so they're doing it. And they do have to memorize a fair amount, um, especially the towns, because it's a pretty long list there. The, um, the question about schools that are involved, I know personally, uh, there's a school program at Lakes Region High School right in Bridgeton, and I visit there uh, once a year to talk to some of their, their junior main guide um, students. Uh, I do want to clarify that they're learning the junior main guide skills. It's not technically the junior main guide program that a lot of those kids may not actually go to encampment. Um, so they're using the curriculum, they're adopting it for their classroom, which is great. We're fully supportive of that. Uh, but at the end of that program, they're not getting a patch. They're not a junior main guide because they participated in the class program. The only way to actually achieve that would be to go to encampment to be tested by the, um, the testing board. Uh, the Pima Academy. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was going to say Oxford Hills started the program last year, yep. right? Yep. And uh, one of their students in that class uh, attended Brian Pond and uh, passed the Junior Main Guide program in a year. And also on the Comus High School um, is doing an outdoor education program using our curriculum. Yeah, so Oxford Hills, what they did is they actually took the Junior Main Guide curriculum and dovetailed it into a science curriculum. So for the entire school year, they're actually learning junior main guide skills in their science programming. Um, they're doing a lot of the components. They're actually doing some things uh, with, so let's say, first aid, and they're going into anatomy and some other things that don't fall into the, when they fall out of scope of the junior main guide program. But at the end, they had a great experience. They used a lot of the good stuff with the junior main guide program. But at the end, uh, if they wanted to go ahead and get the patch and then put all those skills to the test, they would pretty much sign on board with the camp, with a main license camp. Um, so some camps, you know, you may see some folks coming out of a school program that has a lot, have a lot of the skills to get started, but they need that next um, component. That's to be with a sponsored camp to go to encampment. Uh, Peabody Academy uh, is running a program. I know that there's also some other rec programs that I've been learning about that are running um, with the same curriculum. Again, taking a lot of great things that are in here that again, a lot of your camps are probably already doing. You're canoeing, you're hiking, you're building fires, you're making shelters, but it's kind of um, doing that in a little bit more of a de uh, deliberate way. Was there any other part of that question that we didn't answer wrong? Well, the Katahdin school. Can I ask? Uh, the one part I think we missed was how to make expeditions less intimidating. Yeah, right. And one of the things I found is that's the importance of the Junior Maine Woodsman and Woodsman program and developing individual skills and comfort in the out of doors. So you can take somebody from a ground zero with no experience, say that eight or nine year old, and then build them up through the ranks where they're like, I know how to canoe now, I know how to pack my gear, I want to go on these trips. Uh, it's a little harder to do when you find a 15 or 16 year old that's like, I know nothing. But again, if you're selling your program on skill development, and you can show them, well, here's how we start at ground zero. Here's how we build your skills over the course of one, two, three weeks or whatever your time point is. Then we go on the extended expedition. That's something that you can do. That's just, that's the reason for this program is showing how you can go from zero to junior main guide through that process through skill development. Okay. We have a, a camp all thing. Uh, we see, can you guys see my question? But we don't see your question. Oh no, that was his question above. No, let's bring it. Okay, so you may have to retype your question. So, yes. What was the one below that? The, the one below is just thanking you yep. for your okay. comments. Um, the Kentucky um, schools is another public school. Okay. So we talked about career pathways uh, a little earlier on. One thing I, I wanted to uh, highlight is I see a lot of folks that, you know, they work their way up through these programs. And if they do continue on and go to the Junior Main Guide program, at the end of that, um, I know my inbox in my, uh, my email world is full of requests for letters of reference. And we, we kind of work with kids um, on these skills. If they're taking, taking the step to the Junior Main Guide, they're choosing to be tested on their skills. I mean, they can do these skills and not ever have to worry about sitting there, you know, nervously trying to paddle a canoe and be graded on the standards. They're choosing to do this. And I write many, many letters of reference for job applicants and for college um, applications. applications. Um, I would say probably, honestly, more than I, than I want to at certain times of the year because it always seems to fall like right in the same time frame. but I'm really happy to do that. And I actually have colleges and universities responding back to me saying, you know what, I wanna learn more about this program because this candidate really gushed about all these things that they learned and these things, these life skills that they took away from that. And your letter of reference you know, certainly captures that. So it's another way that I think maybe helps sell the program to parents that are deciding which type of program or activities to, to sign their child up for is the value in this program. I think it's, it's not just recreation. I think a lot of what we do is based on recreation, giving kids opportunities to have fun. Um, fun's really accessible. You can do a lot of things that are fun. 
this is fun and engaging, but it, the residual is true life skills. And I could say uh, it's it can be life changing for folks, really can. Yeah. And for those that are worried about the testing process for Junior Main Guide Test Encampment, it's not difficult if you do your homework. And I think the hardest thing to stress to any people that are training people is if you develop the curriculum and let them know if they study and practice, the test encampment is just living the skills at that point. You should be ready to cruise through test encampment, time management. If you can do time management and learn how to do that, they should just walk through the skills by the time they get there. Okay, we do have Camp Olsen's question now, which is a great question. Uh, how would a new camp incorporate the program in an accessible way for campers and staff. We are a two week sleep away camp. How do we get started? Do our staff need to be trained specifically, et cetera? Does a JMG person come on site initially, et cetera? Um, hopefully you have staff that has outdoor experience. And one of the things that I have said a great deal about the time is that the junior main guide program is evaluating outdoor skills. We are not doing anything unique. It's what we think is an efficient way to enjoy yourself in the outer doors. So as Lou said, if you practice, if you've done these things, if you've been out of doors, hopefully you've had a good mentor that you can follow, um, that it falls right in the line. Um, and again, our curriculum book has a lot of information into it. So if someone wants to fine tune questions on maybe, you know, how, how do I teach the top map? We have information on there and the same thing. How do I, I instruct the use of axe and knife, et cetera. Um, so we try to cover everything that we can in there. Um, with that, JMG staff, at times when we can, when we're available, has visited camps um, for some pre-camp uh, work with some of the counselors. But that's kind of a special opportunity we have and we just have to see if staff members are available and can do that. Uh, if, you, if you go to, so the highlights for anyone that wants to do these programs, the first thing is show up to a JMG rendezvous and actually you meet people and see what the skills are about. And the other one is to actually schedule it with Moose and actually come to the Junior Main Guide Test Encampment. This way you can actually get the whole scope of what the APEX program is. And then if you're starting it at your camp, again, starting with the feeder programs first with Junior Main Woodsman and Woodsman. This way the you're developing your older kids. So they're, you're building the foundation. Because if you tend to just start with starting Junior Main Guide, it's a really rough process with people without experience. That's why with the programs I've started over the years, Junior Main Woods, Woodsman, Woodsman, do that for a couple years, and then you're automatically filling your Junior Main Guide program. So it's about that development of skills and not just starting with the apex, because then you're really dealing with a lot of issues that you might not be ready for as a staff yet. Like, are we really ready to go on a six day expedition or a four day expedition? Or do we have enough experience cooking in the outdoors with a group of 12? So a lot of that can be alleviated by the crawl, walk, run of junior main woodsman, woodsman, junior main guide. Yeah, I'll just add, I mean, getting started, it can seem kind of daunting, um, you know, Back to your original question, how, do, how would I get started? I would suggest, you know, really simply is, the Art of Outdoor Living book is, is kind of the, the first step. And that should be to review an equipment list, figure out what you have and maybe what you need, and you know, maybe a, a quick budget for that. And you can improvise on a lot of these things. And then, you know, if time allows, join us for the, um, the rendezvous on July 11th. Even though that's the JMG level, you'll get to see all of those skills and you can you know, bring that down to the, the younger ages uh, to work from that. Um, but the other thing I'd like to offer is, I know part of my role with Brian Pond is, I, I do have a lot of folks who will call and ask for a visit, 
And I've sat with a lot of people, you know, in the off season or even in the season, if the time allows to sit down and talk through like what you have to work with and you know, what I can offer from, um, from my experience. And most times people come, they take a, a whole bunch of notes and they leave. And then, you know, we follow up through email or phone call. So there's a fair number of us that can do that. Um, my door is certainly open to help to kind of guide through, you know, what might work and whatnot. So it doesn't seem so overwhelming. Uh, one thing that I recognized is that we're talking about all these, these three different um, levels, but not everybody may have been on the website or seen the actual skill set. So just going to go through the, the junior main woodscraft um, areas of evaluation, which are broken into majors and minors and uh, get folks aligned. So it starts with camping tools. So how to use basic camping tools, knives, axes, things like that. Canoeing, shelter and fireplace, mapping compass, including top of map, uh, map of area, map of Maine, trip equipment, wilderness first aid, cooking, group encampment, and that was all the majors. The minors are main issues, environmental concerns, fire building, tree identification, hiking and backpacking, equipment knowledge, leave no trace, wilderness regulations, outdoor living skills, which is general knowledge, and wildlife identification. Now, if your head's not already spinning, there's a lot of topics there, but a lot of them, there's some overlap. So with, say, shelter and fireplace, you're actually incorporating some of your actionship, maybe some knife skills and whatnot. Um, so a lot of these are broken into to small pieces. I know from my standpoint, from a facilitator, it's nice because they're broken into lesson groups and uh, you can do a lot of different things there. One thing we didn't talk about is um, one of the minors is main issue. And main issue is a way for kids to think about something that, that um, is meaningful to them, whether it's their community or something that they care deeply about. And they write a brief essay um, about you know, what that main issue is. What I like is I like to see the different personalities come out through these essays. For the junior main guides, that's a requirement. They actually write an essay. Um, and many of them are very, very compelling about what an issue is, what are some of the solutions and ways to move forward. So. That's kind of a neat one. There's a lot of the, the um, areas of evaluation that are actually, they come down to written tests. So wilderness regulations, general knowledge, leave no trace, um, hiking and backpacking, those are written tests at the junior main guide level. Um, and basically a lot of that information is available, whether it's hands-on experience or in the, uh, the main Appalachian mountain guide for hiking. Uh, there's a lot of stuff right in the purpose of that about, you know, hiking etiquette and, um, safety protocols, as well as um, the, uh, the lake and paddling guide. So there's a lot of information right there. Wilderness regs ties into a lot of the in the pictures and wildlife uh, things, things like um, hunting and fishing seasons or ages for a trip leader permit, getting a guide's license, uh, where to obtain a fire permit and things like that. Uh, and honestly, wilderness regulations we've talked about is a really important skill because out of everything that we're doing here, if we're not doing it within current regulations, we may have some issues down the road. Uh, one, one that I think is really um, kind of a fun lesson to learn uh, is wildlife identification. And you take for granted that kids can go out and explore and they know what, you know, certain animals look like, but I'm always uh, shocked to see, you know, kids that can't even identify a raccoon or things like that. They don't have any personal knowledge of that. So wildlife uh, identification, I think we added about five or six years ago to the testing modules. What about the level of proficiency that a nine-year-old would need to pass that? Yeah, so the curriculum, you know, you, you have to kind of adapt it to your to your kids. If you've got a nine to 12-year-old age bracket that you're working with, if you've got two nine-year-olds and a bunch of 12-year-olds, you know, you're going to have to, um, I guess, decide what is, um, you know, meeting that standard, so to speak. There's no testing that is handed down um, to that level. So you have to kind of guide yourself on you know, what satisfies that. In the Art of Outdoor Living, there's some basic um, benchmarks in there, like can identify X amount of trees or X amount of um, you know, animals and things like that, and successfully get a fire uh, built or you know, can cook meals successfully. Um, again, you have to work with those age brackets and the, the goal is to really gain success um, with the challenge them, but uh, they're not, Testing is going to be as regimented as the junior main guide level. And we, uh, just to use as a standard, at the, for the junior main guide program, um, a candidate may 
still may pass the course by failing, we call it retesting, one major and yeah. three minors. So there is wiggle room. Uh, you know, if, if a student um, has difficulty with something and does, does well overall. Yeah. Uh, me in particular, I work with the Junior Maine Woodsman and Woodsman the last couple of years specifically. And when I test the younger groups, I tell them they're going to have to take a test. And I teach the whole week. They're doing all the activities. And at the end of the session, I, I do it verbally and ask them questions about, hey, what's this animal? What's this on a map? And I just go through it orally for everybody, 9 to 12. Everyone answers the questions, and everyone moves on from there. Um, so we had another question, and the question was how to um, they get the curriculum guide. So the two, we've got the Art of Outdoor Living, which was revised not that long ago, just a couple of years ago. And then the guidebook, which was um, the precursor, which was 2016, I believe. Uh, so you would get those right through Maine summer camps, as well as the patches. You know. So if you're running a program, you want to start off with getting the guidebooks so that you're in line with the curriculum. And then you would send an email to Maine Summer Camps or call or go right online to the Junior Maine Guide site and you can actually order the patches. So if you've got a group of 12 kids, you can go ahead and order your patches for that, that level um, right through Maine Summer Camps. Okay, yep, so uh, as a reference, the, uh, the Art of Buckwell Living is $34 and the guidebook is 18. Um, they're really nice, it's kind of got a tie back cover. Um, lots of pictures, it's broken down into bullets. It also has um, some of the, the tests broken down to, into the evaluation sheets, so you can see how they're actually being evaluated at the JMG level, which is really important to align your teaching. Um, but there's lots of things in here, uh, some menus. Um, there's a lot of history in here and a lot of tradition. There's even camp songs that go way back to the, the uh, early days of JMG. But there's, a, there's a, quite a bit of information. Um, and then the website, the website has some information on there, which we're gonna be actually doing a, a pretty big review of and making some updates to the uh, JMG website shortly. Is there any questions? Any other questions? That's, it. Answer? That's it. Does anybody else have any other questions for us at all? So if you want my contact information, just uh, contact main camps and then they will uh, forward everything to me. I um, probably well, get an occasional phone call from camps interested in how to start the programs or um, some other questions as well there too. So I, I just like to close by saying, you know, good, good luck with everything. Um, these are just such outstanding, valuable program um, for our young adults that uh, I hope we've been helpful and, uh, and so, to allow you to run some successful programs. One last thing we talked about uh, before we kicked off this morning was that we're looking at adding a training uh, in, we're thinking in June for camps that would like to participate. So we still have a little bit of work to do, but the, uh, the goal would be back to one of the questions of how I train my staff. This would be a program uh, geared towards, you know, instructing um, your staff on how to actually instruct and teach these, these lessons and whatnot. And with that training, I would imagine we would have guidebooks and um, the Art of Muggle Living available right there. So you could actually send your folks to be trained and then leave with a guidebook and whatnot. More details on that. We're still working on some details. Uh, let us know. But yeah, let us know. Certainly, um, I would funnel that information to uh, Ron Hall at Maine Summer Camps. And uh, he'll be able to connect the dots on, on the dates and whatnot. So other than that, I really want to thank everybody that took their time out of their morning to join us today. Hopefully this was helpful. And uh, my email is ronald.fournier at main.edu if anybody wants to throw any questions my way or sit in my office and talk about getting started or whatnot. And uh, I think anything else is, that's not clear, follow it right through Don Hall at um, Main Summer Camps. And uh, we'll, we'll try to connect with you all. So thank you again to <clears throat> all of you who participated. Thank you to Andrew Scoggin and Bank for sponsoring the technology for these webinars. Um, we, as a reminder, everything can be available through the 
the office here or the website. And I also want to thank uh, Luke, Moose, and Ron for uh, presenting today. And we've got some coffee mugs here for them. Thank you. Guys. <laughs> thank you all again. And uh, please get in touch with us if you have any questions about this program in the future. Get it up there.